I've still got jalapenos and there's a snap freeze coming. What do I do? Don't panic, it's okay. I'm gonna show you some things that I do to help ease your mind and show you how I can protect your garden when an unexpected frost or early freeze is coming in. It's really simple, it's a three-prong approach. We're gonna identify, we're gonna prioritize, and then we're gonna act. You can do it really quick and it's really easy, guys. You didn't think I'd leave you out in the cold, did you? No. Let's get our hands dirty. So we've been having some weird weather lately. In fact, it's been really strange the last couple of years. Um, right now, we're about three to four weeks from when we should have our first frost, and we're looking at our first frost and potentially freeze tonight. Uh, things like this happen, and a lot of times we're not ready in the garden. For me, my growing season is a little bit longer. I can grow a lot of really good stuff in the fall, but I have to get it started early. But if we have a snap freeze or a frost that damages the seedlings or other tender plants before they're ready to handle that cold, it's a real problem. So this is what we're gonna do here. We're going to just go through all the methods that I know, and it's a three-step process to um, basically make this a little bit easier. Now remember, I'm working specifically towards a frost and potential light freeze that may happen for an hour or two, maybe once, and then it's gone in a couple of days, I'm back to normal temperatures. You may be dealing with something that's an actual freeze that may last longer, or frost that may last longer, so this is just my way of doing things, so make sure that you think about what you're doing in your area and act appropriately. Before we get started on the method of three, I wanna talk a little bit about the things you need to actually put and cover your garden and keep it protected from frost or light freeze. In my case, we're gonna use these sets of tools. We're gonna to use some bamboo stick, some bamboo cane. I have lots of it laying around. Bamboo cane, we've got a pair of scissors in case we need to cut some stuff. We also have a serrated blade so we can cut our bamboo or if we need to cut something down to remove it from the garden. A pair of shears, I like clothespins because I think they're really great. And I also have a lot of these little clips that I use for keeping my bug netting on, which has been on these plants for a while now. In addition to that, we want a little bit of duct tape, in my case, because I'm gonna be making a small greenhouse for something I really wanna make sure I protect the leaves on, some twine or string, and some frost cloth or blankets, anything you have laying around. So it's important to know that it doesn't matter specifically that you use the things I use. I even have these, which I think are called cloches. Anyway, they've got little holes right here, and I can use the landscape staple to pin them down over individual plants, and they have a vent hole at the top. So I'm gonna give these a run. As substitutes, you can use uh, nursery pots, you know, the big black ones, um, things like that. You can use just a regular pot. You can use plastic bags, big gallon bags. You can use old blankets. You can use uh, broken sticks and limbs, which I've used in the past. Anything you have laying around to help protect. So that's the most important thing. So now that we've got all the tools and things we're gonna need out of the way, let's talk about the most important part. And that's step one, identifying. So identifying what plants we have, that's step one. When we identify the plants we have, we're looking for a couple of different things. Basically, it's where are our plants and in what stage are they at and what are we expecting from them? And what I mean by that is, if you've got a plant that's at the very end of its season, it may not be worth covering up and you wanna prioritize these things. So we're gonna identify what we have. In my case, I have carrots here. I have some uh, kind of rare onions uh, and unique onions that I really kind of wanna protect. So I'll probably frost protect these. They're not really, really, susceptible to the cold, but they could be. And I just don't wanna take any chances with these. That's why I've had them covered with uh, insect netting for so long. Then we also have things like these radishes. These should be fine, but I also have in here some very tender garlic and back here, some uh, very, very new uh, seedlings and uh, some onions in here as well, some garlic. So I wanna make sure that I protect those. Now, most of this other stuff, I've got the Swiss chard, which thanks to the weird heat has been eaten up by uh, caterpillars in the last couple of days, also my collards and some other things and flowers in here that I'm not too worried about. The other thing might be things that are growing in this season that you expect to have for next season for food or even later on in this part of the year. So I would have a lot of lettuces going um, and I do have some seedlings of those that I want to protect. I also have some brassicas that are growing that I want to protect. Uh, also my sweet peas, which really I should be able to get a harvest out of them uh, before the cold hits, but because it's early, I need to protect those. So that's our, our second kind of category. Our third category are end of season things or things that are being planted in late season. So for me, 
things like my ginger and my turmeric. Um, I want to make sure I protect what's left of that in my pots. Uh, there's not a bunch left, but I want to protect it anyway. Things like sugar cane, which will be coming uh, ready to harvest here in a bit. And then I've also got things like um, I planted fall potatoes. I need that foliage to stay in good shape. So um, those are the kind of things that we're looking for. Then we're looking for the one-offs, the things that probably I could live without, but I'd really like to protect them if I can. And that's things like pie pumpkins that have actually shown up late season and are doing really well, but they need a few more weeks to ripen up before I can use them. So that's our third category. Now our fourth category are things you just like to cover. Um, things like the tomatoes, things like the basil. That's not stuff I'm really counting on getting something out of, but if I can and I have enough material to do it, then I'm gonna give it a try. So that's it, we've identified things, so it's on to the next step, which is to prioritize things. So step number two is gonna to be to prioritize. Now I always make a list of the stuff in the identification stage, and I know this is a little bit much, and depending on how much you have in the garden and how important it really is to you, you don't have to do this, but I always write everything down. I identify where it is, what it is, that way I can keep track of things and know what's important to me. So when we talk about prioritizing, again, when we identified our plants, we talked about things that were uh, crucial to this season. So things like the lettuces or uh, next season, like the onions and garlics, things like that, that can usually get through the winter. We want to make sure we prioritize those first. And again, this is my take on it. You don't have to do it this way. This is the way I do it. So just keep that in mind. Like for me, I really want to get some of these spaghetti squash. They finally are coming in. The, the, the weather's been perfect. I think there's another one down here somewhere. The weather's been really, really perfect. I want to get these if I can. Um, so that's kind of a priority too. So first priority for me is going to prioritize what's for this season and the next season. So young stuff in next season for feeding me. The other thing is things I can get now, like for instance, my peppers. My peppers still have fruits on them. They still have some potential left, at least for another three weeks. I could get a lot more peppers out of this. And by the way, it's really important to know that you also go through and pick everything that you have right now that you could actually eat. Like I've picked all my peppers, my eggplants. I picked some green beans. Uh, from there, it's the things that I really want to get harvest out of. Like I said, protect my uh, pie pumpkins that are over there. Or in this case, really important to me is actually the potatoes so that would be tier two other things i might want to protect are my uh my mullein and my other medicinals and herbs which i will do that's kind of a high priority for me but i got so much of it that it's okay if some of it freezes uh and then the last tier would be things like the tomatoes that are back over here i have so much basil and the tomatoes really they could get some small green tomatoes by the end of the fall even if they stayed on it's just been weird weather um but they're not a huge priority to me. So we prioritize. We're gonna put everything in a list from top to bottom and we're gonna work from the top, most important, to the least important, and we're gonna cover everything we can. When we run out of materials, we're done, but we hope that we get down that list of things before we run out of material to cover everything we really wanna plant. So what's next? It's really simple, it's time to act. Now, I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast and the sun's doing weird things, but I'm running out of time and I wanna make sure I get this done. So um, when it comes to act, this is a little different for everyone. For me, I'm gonna do my best to protect everything I have in this garden, even including this uh, pumpkin back here, the pumpkins that are growing are back in the back, um, by covering them with frost cloth. Now, there are some exceptions to that. I will be using some plastic around my potatoes because I do wanna create a greenhouse effect, but I'm gonna do a variation of things. For instance, I'll take the bamboo, I'll put it into the beds, in the corners, cover it with the frost cloth, and then I can also go back with the safety pins to kind of secure everything down. Uh, with the cloches, the little green cones, I'll put those over some individual plants as I can, but mainly those are just kind of an experiment. I'll need to gather some plants together and make sure that I can cover them all in one spot to make it easier for me. And that's what it's really about, protecting the plants and making it easier for you. Some of the other things you can do is you can just lay the frost cloth very lightly over plants. You don't have to elevate it off of them, although I do find using the bamboo sticks to elevate the frost cloth off of the leaves helps to make sure that you don't get frosted plants. But in a pinch, you do what you have to do. Once I'm done, we'll take a look at everything real quick and then uh, we'll let you get on to preparing for your own frost or freeze. All right guys, so I'm done. I'm, battery's about to die, so important thing to tell you right here, you cannot leave this stuff on forever, especially the greenhouse stuff. If you do, your plants will die. So as soon as the first chance of freeze or frost is gone, make sure and remove them. Let's take a look at what we got going on. I had to make some choices. Those don't get covered. The peppers made it. The squash, the watermelon, the cilantro, the ginger, this greenhouse. This is definitely got to come off or you'll bake your plants and they'll suffocate as well. Well, sort of. Even my mullen, 
We got the horseradish. We did not get the sweet peas either. And frankly, we probably weren't going to get anything out of them. The heat liked to have killed everything. So there you have it. I was able to protect all my early season stuff, like my young seedlings of my onions, um, the tender greens, things like that. I also protected some things I wanted to protect, like uh, to get a further harvest from, like my uh, late season or fall potatoes, um, my peppers, things like that. I still had some time to get if we weren't having this early snap freeze slash frost. Uh, and then I also got to protect some of the things that I really would like to protect, like my late season pumpkins, um, you know, my spaghetti squash, things I'm not really counting on, but if I can save them, I will. I even consolidated the stuff that I have in pots, like my medicinals and herbs, and I put them together underneath the cloth as well. That way they'll be protected too. Now, we were able to do this because we took a three-step approach. The first approach is to identify. We want to identify the plants that we have in our garden and what they classify themselves as, whether they're early season, they are mid-season, late season, or they're just stuff that shouldn't even be around anymore and stuff we want to see. Then we're going to prioritize the, that list. We're going to take and say, okay, this is what I need to get growing the rest of this season or into next spring. This is what I think I can still get a harvest out of. And then this is the stuff I'd like to if I can, but it's not that important. That gives us our priority list. We write all those down and then we start at the top. Then we act. That's our third step. We get whatever we have, whether it's blankets, frost protection, plastic, uh, I'm using, I use bamboo, uh, whatever you have, pots, anything you have, and you start protecting from the top of the list to the bottom. And hopefully by the time you get to the bottom of the list, you've protected everything you wanted to protect. Now, this is for a frost or a light freeze in my case. If you're looking for a heavier freeze protection, this isn't going to probably be enough, but you could do things like add Christmas lights underneath your, uh, your frost protection or your plastic. You could bring potted plants inside. Now, hopefully this caught you in time. You were able to see it when you needed it, but if not, hopefully it gives you some great ideas for next spring or next fall so you can protect your plants when you need to. So guys, if you like this video and you got this far, I really appreciate it if you give us a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. I know it sounds stupid, but it really, really does make a difference. And comment below. What are the things that you use? I've heard of people using sprinklers to, to ward off a freeze, which I've done before and it works. There's lots of other ways. So what is your go-to method when you're surprised by a, a freeze or a quick frost? What do you do? Put that down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it. And also, if you know somebody that lives in an area this is about to happen or it's already happened or they've struggled with it, share it with them. Really, it means a lot to me. So that's it, guys. I just want to leave you like I always leave you. There's only four things you need to live a happy and well-balanced life. Number one, you need something to believe in. Number two, you need somebody to love. Number three, you need something to do. And number four, you need something to look forward to. I look forward to hanging out with you guys. I look forward to talking to you in the comments and I love helping you out. So if you have any questions, always post them down there, guys. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna see another video that could really help you learn something in the garden, take a look at this right here. I'm telling you, it could really help. All right, that's it, guys. I love you and I can't wait to see you in the next video. All right, doc out.